Okay, now is where the fun really begins. Uh, what I call instant gratification. This is just pure quantization. This is a song that was recorded to a tick track. It's got a drum loop, uh, a guitar track that was recorded live to that drum loop, and then a bass part that was actually uh, generated, but it's a live feel to it. None of the three are exactly quantized to the, to the grid here. So I'm just going to show you instant gratification. We'll go ahead and select the guitar track and just hit Q and it'll automatically generate the transients. And then map those transients to the grid. Here's the grid settings. Go ahead and um, bring that up for you. So it's just the 16th uh, straight feel, 100% no swing. Here you can see it's quantized the rhythm guitar. Let's just zoom in on that a little bit. You can see it's done a really good job of identifying the transients of the strumming of the guitar. You can listen to it here. just has subtly pushed and pulled uh, some of the strumming beats, uh, compressed and stretched them, uh, but it's still holding a, a good feel of the song. The timing has subtly improved the rhythm uh, timing of the guitar track. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that on the drum loop, even though it's a drum loop, it was a natural kind of feel to the drum loop. I'll just apply a straight quantization on that and a straight quantization on that. You can see where it's kind of pushed and pulled. Things. And then let's do the same thing for the bass track. There you go. Yes, yeah, almost instant gratification. It doesn't get much simpler than that in terms of being able to use an, uh, a quantizing tool. I think they've done a really great job on just keeping this super simple. I'm going to use the quantize groove tool, and I'm going to go. I'm going to start with the bass player, believe it or not, and we're going to make uh, the drummer and the guitar player groove to the bass player. So let's go ahead and start with it. Uh, detect the transients on the bass. Bring up our quantization panel. Select Groove. We're going to drag the bass part into there. And there is the uh, transients of the bass line. And then I'm going to take a guitar player and apply those transient, uh, the groove transients to the guitar player. So I'll just hit the apply button. I haven't done anything else here. So it automatically generates the transients for the guitar and then maps them, uh, quantizes them or to the groove of the bass player. It's got kind of a kickback feel to it. So I'm going to have to do the same thing to the drummer. Apply it. And these are just loops now. So I'm applying this uh, live bass player track to these loops and the live guitar part and pulling all three together. subtly changed the overall uh, feel of the song in that perspective, but it's really pulled it together in relationship to the bass player's kind of um, behind-the-beat feel. There is your perfect example of 
groove quantization where you're basically deciding which musician is going to lead the overall groove and then bringing the other musicians into them. There's a special kind of quantization called phase coherent multitrack quantization which has to deal with a constant delay that exists between the overhead mic and the closed mic on recording live drums. When the person hits the snare here, it records the sound immediately, but there is a delay that takes the, the time for that to travel to get to the overhead mic, which causes this delay or a phase in the actual drum strike. Here you see it in practicality within Studio One. Here's a snare, and here's the overhead snare interpretation and recording of that same event. So there's always that phase. And so it's important that that phase is always, whenever you move this beat, this one always has to stay exactly the same distance from it. So you one has to become kind of a child of the other one. And we'll go ahead and explain how that does that is done in Studio One. By grouping the tracks together, Studio One automatically figures out and takes care of most of that for you and makes it real simple. Let's take a look at it. So here's a multi-track drum recording of the room, overheads, snares, kicks, hi-hats, toms, etc. I'll just let you listen to it here. Okay, so what we're going to do here is, right off the bat, uh, normally people would slice drums. They kind of like to, uh, that way you, you get kind of the Rex file approach to uh, moving the drums around. Each one of the drums isn't then doesn't get stretched, but nowadays the stretching algorithms are so good, I, I just don't, I actually would prefer just to do it with the, with the quantization. So let's just go try that first. Now these are all grouped into one group, and as we do that, they shall all show up in the guide here under the auto bend options. And so what I've done is deselected all the different, uh, you know, less driving drums and just picked the snare and the kick to drive the overall quantization and taken the overhead room mics out of that. Now I'm just going to hit quantization and just remind, remind you that the quantizations are set as the whatever we had set over here on the uh, quantization one. So we're going to go against the grid, a 16th note straight quantization here. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit the apply button. And you see it has gone through and quantized these things. So it's definitely tightened up and rigid of that feel. Normally I wouldn't do this to like take away the whole live feel of a drummer, but if there's a mistake in a drum or something like that that's been recorded with an overhead mic, most likely the most realistic thing would be to go in and just move those, um, that one beat, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, you know. Kind of over the top rigid now. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that, that uh, phase coherent thing that we were talking about. So you, you see that it stretched this kick uh, snare and kick drum here on this beat and kept the overhead mic in the same relationship to that and that is kind of the the ultimate thing about a phrase coherent um, multi-track uh, quantization and they've already taken care of it for you now let's go ahead and just slice the same segment I'm going to go ahead and set this to slice now and it gives you a completely different options down here we're still using those, the snare and the kick, to drive the overall analysis. Um, we're going to have it set to auto fade, so if it does move uh, segments across each other, there won't be any pops or clicks. Uh, merge to auto parts. I'm not going to do that one, but we're going to go say, go ahead and um, quantize this. You know, actually, I'm going to leave that one off just for a second, kind of so you can just see where it, it does the slicing. Let's go ahead and apply that. So you see that it used this as the master downbeat there and 
kept this and slice this one exactly equal to wherever that V was right there. Now we'll just go on ahead and normally you could just do this all in one click, but I'm going to do it in separate ones so you can kind of see what it's doing here. And then we'll apply that uh, quantization and uh, let's back off here so we can see what it, which ones is actually pushed and pulled in the uh, overall process. There you go. It's that simple to uh, tighten up um, live drum performance recorded with an overhead mic. Okay, and last but not least, let's just go ahead and show you how to fix just one note or late snares, except things like that. Remember, this is recorded with a mic on the close to the snare and one uh, at the room level of the snare, so there's a delay there. But let's go ahead and listen. Okay, so there's kind of a late snare sound there. I'm going to go ahead and show you that late snare. Here's the late snare. Um, I've got these two just grouped together. This is the room for the snare and the snare. I'm going ahead and just um, select quantize. Hit the apply button. And boom. There it is in line. And when it moved it up, it kept the room mic in sync with it. And it's that simple to um, quantize recordings with done with multiple mics on a, on a live drum set. And there you go. We pretty much covered the whole gamut of fixing timing with groove tools, with quantization tools, with uh, tempo mapping tools. I highly recommend that you just uh, go ahead and try this stuff. It's it's guaranteed to use it subtly. It will improve the overall timing of your of your music and your recordings. And and Studio One has done a really good job of taking a complex area that can be overwhelming. And I know in my experience with using with other DAWs, it's uh, it's usually so complicated and overwhelming that people don't use it. Well, I think Studio One has uh, kind of reached gone over that threshold and made it simple enough for people to just press a button and get it done and get fairly satisfied results. So give it a try. Happy quantizing.